Mind pollution gaming. Am I the guy on the left? You guy on the right. No, no, no. You're the one who's not doing shit. Where? 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 <laughs> on the right. But he's doing something. Yeah, he's just like. I think <laughs> he's, he's just going around. The, you know? He's just going around the yeah, ring. He's like, oh, let's <laughs> let's check this place out. Yeah, but look at you're falling down. I'm not. So I must be that's, doing something that's, right. That's Because you're trying good, shit. Good point. I'm just going around the fucking ring. This yeah, is not bad. I'm safe. Opening bid. Twenty-one thousand. What is your bid? Well, now that includes the 10 acres of forest around the house. It can't build on it. It's protected. That seems inexpensive. <laughs> Did I hear 27? What's up guys, my name is Daniel and welcome to Mind Pollution Gaming, the show where I invite one guest to play retro games with them and talk to them about their creative work. This is episode 2 and the man next to me was on so many TV shows and so many movies. He has almost 200 credits on IMDb and I'm very happy he's here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry motherfucking Cedar. And Larry, thank you so much for being here. This My pleasure, I'm very excited. All right, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> if it's anything beyond Pong, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun. All right, um, um, let's see. I picked out a couple of games. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because, okay, here's the thing. Yesterday, I was kind of researching for this, you know, and I was like looking for interviews and stuff like that. But then I found something <laughs> way more interesting. Like here I am doing a show about gaming and people I know and all that. You did a fucking commercial for Sonic. <laughs> ah! Ah! Sega Genesis. The character's name, I play a woman, old lady named Danita Stokes and she runs an organization called HAG, H-A-G, Humans Against Genesis, because I hate Genesis, and I hate, particularly hate Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm trying to kill him. And so I'm trying to get people to rally around this idea. This is so amazing, that man. Is funny. That's you weird. know how many parents probably hated you? Oh, yeah. Because like all the kids were like, we want that. And also like kind of how you dissed Mario in it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I specifically remember that too. So I picked up the original Sonic, <laughs> the one that you advertised oh, for. Oh, wow. Um, That's funny. Oh, but. Cool. The sequel, we can actually play together. <laughs> so well, you can play. I'll try. I'll push buttons. And yeah, let's that. do that. Let's try that. That's hysterical. So we're gonna play Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh no! All right, we can pick a level. <laughs> Whatever's easiest. I don't know. So let's see. I'm that. So you're Sonic, which is actually very fitting. Uh, you okay. jump on, on this dude, Which on the one? yellow one. Yellow jumps. Okay, and and what's the others? I think that's all. Blue is jumps also. Yellow jumps. I think everything jumps. Red yeah. jumps. Oh shit. Okay, so you're screen and you're on top. I'm on top. So this is if I'm moving forward. Got it. So if I want to get that yellow thing, you just I jump, jump up. up. Hey! How am I doing? Pretty good. You got one ring. <laughs> If you hit a like an enemy, yeah. you lose that ring. Okay, so the so, thing that's up above my head, what is that? Oh, that's just like Clouds. a platform. And the, this thing right here, oh, am I walking through something? Okay, so I want to get up there. No, I'm just still going. Okay. Man, I'm a freaking, I'm yeah. a freaking yeah. video game moron. You're figuring this out, man. Right, I used to play the old video games in the arcades. I mean, this one so. is pretty old if you think about it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the machines. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There was no playing at home. Right, right, right. I mean, that's how old I am. Holy shit. So tell me about Fear and Loathing. Seriously, if anyone's watching this, they're going to go, he's not playing, he's pushing buttons. So Fear and Loathing, one of the greatest experiences of my life, and I'll just take you right through it. First thing that happens, I walk up and there's Terry Gilliam. Uh -huh. And he sits down next to me, he goes, Larry, welcome to the film. And I go, I go, I'm sorry, I'm incredibly intimidated right now and scared to death. <laughs> I'm sitting next to one of my absolute heroes, right. Brazil, one of my favorite films yeah, ever, fuck yeah. everything he's done. I said, I said, I'm just so, and he's of course very humble. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just got to ask you a question. How do you come up with this shit? Right. And he goes, he goes, Best answer ever. He goes, I don't know. I don't know. I just, you know, and, and we take, and so his whole set, the whole thing about the set was really chaos. Right. And nothing was ever set. Nothing was set. He had a basic format of what was supposed to happen. And then he let Johnny and, and Benicio just kind of go. There was lines and stuff like that, but it was different every take. Right. And uh, God, I love those two guys. So playful, so fun, so kind. 
and uh, the set was like a train wreck. There uh -huh. was shit everywhere. Yeah. They just threw, it was like they just took a dump truck and just built <laughs> their art direction, which just, whatever we got around here, just put it on the set, fuck it, we'll figure out a way to step over and walk around it, because you wanted this kind of chaos. Right. Which is what that movie is. It's yeah. just, it's just, yeah. it's just that's what I love about it. Yeah, so yeah, it was great. And uh, <clears throat> when it was over, it was like, I don't even really remember it happening. It was so in the moment real. Uh, because it was so chaotic and he gave so little direction. He just said, let's do it again. Uh -huh. When it was over, I was like, what the fuck just happened? And, uh, and then when I saw the movie, I was like, whoa. I mean, yeah. my scene was tame. And I came for a wardrobe fitting a couple days before I was shooting and the wardrobe fitting was in the bar when they uh -huh. first show up at the casino. Right, right. And I walk in and Johnny Depp's like this, you know, he's like, yeah. You know, and he's seeing shit because they're high. Right. And, and, and it was, I thought, what is going on here? There was just, there was, it looked like there was no one in charge. Right. And uh, that's amazing. It's yeah. like a clown college. I would kill, I would kill to be in another Terry Gilliam movie. Let's change games. Okay. <laughs> well, I crushed this one. Exactly. I so crushed I, it. I, I can't add. What did anything. I score? Uh, zero. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, Let's play Tony Hawk. Sure. Pro Skater 3. <laughs> I don't even know if I played that one. Yeah. Holy shit. Look at this, man. This is great. Oh my God. Yeah. How could I have missed out completely on this world? I How could know, I know man. nothing about it? You know, we're gonna take a trip. All right. Um, all right, let me pick my play. I love the graphics. All right. <laughs> so badass. It's There's like, Tony. <laughs> that is Tony. I'm gonna I know. play. Hold on, I'm gonna take him. You're gonna be Tony? I'm gonna be Tony. You're gonna be? Steve Caballero. I guess so. Style, street, stance, goofy. Yeah. Well, oh, that's right, you can customize yourself. Right, right, right. Man, so, I'm, I'm out of the loop. You just press X, then you'll. you'll me? Continue. Do I do that? Yeah. What do I do, X? Yeah. That, I'm in? And you're in. Holy shit. Let's see. Listen, Powers Booth, who I did Deadwood with, we did a game, we did Hitman together. He's a gamer. We well, passed away. Right. So unfortunately, but he, he played games. I just never quite figured it out. I was too busy trying to figure out how to act. Well, what, what's happened to me is, and I can tell you a little bit about something that I've kind of changed in my life. I, I, I'm not, it's not meditation per se, but I've developed a, a type of meditation uh -huh. uh, that I'm determined to master. Right. And, I love it so much that any spare time I have, uh, I that. try to log hours, literally right, log hours. Because right. I know that the more I practice it, the better I'll Oh yeah, for get. sure. It's like working out for your mind. And it's become an obsession with me because it's something I really want to get really good at because I've noticed right. that when I do it, it helps my acting, it helps oh, everything. Oh, definitely. It helps. Oh, I'm feeling shit. This yeah, is one of those, you're, you're uh, actually, what do they call it, haptic? Playing. Haptic? Am yeah. I the guy on the left? You got on the right. No, no, no. You're the one who's not doing shit. Where, where, where <laughs> on is the it? right? But he's doing something. Yeah, he's just like. I think <laughs> he's, he's just going around. The, <laughs> you know? He's just going around the yeah, ring. He's like, oh, let's <laughs> let's check this place out. Yeah, but look, you're falling down. I'm not. So I must be that's, doing something that's, right. Because you're true. trying good, shit. Good point. I'm just going around the fucking ring. This yeah, is not bad. I'm safe. Look at me, man. This is the way to go. This is, well, this is about this is about this is about right for a guy my age. I'm it's just kind of <laughs> shit. I'm, I keep falling and shit. Uh, oh, there I go. I fell. I tell you, and I keep talking about this when you get older because it's such a cliche, but there's shit that happens to you. I still think of myself as like a 30 year old, but I'm not, man. I'm double that. I, I still think of myself as a 12 year old. Yeah, so, so that's, that's part and parcel to this industry. We're kind of young at heart. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you do become aware as you get older of the limitations of time. Oh, and you definitely. start to really seriously yeah. consider where do I want to put my time because mm -hmm. I don't want to dissipate my time. I want to focus it and really do stuff that means something to me. Totally agree. So you start to narrow it down. You say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. There's like lots of stuff I'd like to pursue, right. but I'm going to focus on the things that mean something to me. So I've kind of narrowed it down. Meditation is, is a very important thing to me. Same Acting here. is a very important thing. You meditate, right? I, I you started, said it kind of helped you a lot. I started meditating, um, I would say two and a half years ago, and yeah, there man. has not been a day where I missed my meditation. Right at the root of, and I'm not trying to get too philosophical here, yeah. but the root of what motivates a lot of us is pain avoidance. Yeah. So when we feel pain or discomfort or unhappiness, we go to certain go-to things out of right. habit. Right. They're quick and easy, but they don't They're necessarily not, work. Right, exactly. So you get, in, you, it's a self-destructive pattern. Yeah. So what meditation does is it reorients you so that in those moments, there's a more constructive way to deal with it. Yeah, and I and, think uh, it's it's kind of scary for people to actually take time for yourself and yeah. face and to feel what's yeah and and whatever is in your head to actually that's deal right. with it. And, you got it. You nailed but, it. But but actually, like that's the only way to to actually deal with shit instead of just suppressing it. Like you can only yeah. But it is a challenge. Yeah, you can and only sweep things under the rug for so long, and then you right. you trip. That's like, right. Oh my God! I fell so hard. I, there's, wow, blood. there's blood. Ah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, 
I hurt myself so bad. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Doing nothing. That's hysterical. <laughs> um, so you did like four or five voices in this game, right? I like, guess so, yeah. That's crazy. So how do you do that when you... They just I tell mean, you everything. It's all written down there. I know, but what I mean is like... Change be, voices? Right. Well, that's what I do. I play... I know, I, but I'm like... character like, guy. Like, can you do an example? Oh, no! 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 Well, dude, you totally missed that turn. It's like, yeah. I mean, That's know? crazy because, like, I mean, when I saw, I'm like, oh, hold up, how does he do all? This? I mean, I get it because, like, uh, Seth MacFarlane does that on Family Guy. He does like, like, seven hundred thousand voices, voices. Or whatever. What they and switches like in a second. Oh, well, like, yeah. That is fucking. You crazy. get more and more depth at it the more you do it. <laughs> right. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of it lately, but what was somebody told me once? I said, but this character isn't he kind of close to this one? They go, look, it's a big game. Right. They're so far apart in the game, no one will ever. Oh know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so um, that makes sense. But yeah. you do a lot of like dudes and this kind of stuff. Like, uh -huh. ah, that was great. You know, you, you that kind of stuff, and they'll kind of give you ideas, they'll right. give you suggestions. Uh, you know, but yeah, it's fun. You know, I've done all, I've done all kinds of different characters. But I got to be honest with you, I as much as I like doing voiceovers in this, uh -huh. I'm always going to be an on-camera guy. I don't feel yeah. satisfied unless I'm standing in front of another actor Dude, I, and I, a real I, set with real. This is great. I mm -hmm. love this. And the money's good. Right. And sensational. But for me, man, I want to be. I want to be in front of a camera. I want to be on a stage. Uh, it's. I, I want the the human experience. You know? I think that's the crazy thing about you. Like, it's impossible to typecast you in a way because, like, <laughs> you can be a fucking car salesman in one scene. Right. And then in the next movie, you're a fucking serial killer. And I believe that shit. What was that movie? The Crazies. The Crazies. Yeah. Like, dude, you. you I don't remember much of the movie, but what I do remember <laughs> Mr. is Pitchfork. you. Mr. Yeah, it's you. Like, seriously. Oh, I figured out how to do something. I have no idea how to use this, but I figured out how to go in circles. So if you... If, if you go down on one and up on the other. If you um, press down X and then release the button, you actually jump. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> this has to be the lamest job anyone's ever done in a game. I have no goals. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just enjoying the ride. I mean, my score is not that much higher than yours. And what do you mean? I, 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 yeah, I know, but like, still, I'm I, like, I keep trying shit, but I just, <laughs> I just fall on. I do time. like this though. Um, I can see where it could become addictive. Dude, you were on freaking Constantine. I didn't know. Obviously, I uh, didn't know. I'll tell you know. a story about it. I'll tell you a story about that. So I had got somewhat of a reputation for doing monster work because I did the creature on the wing. Right, right, right. And then I did Dreamscape, and so my agent said they're doing this thing, Constantine with Keanu Reeves, and they have a creature they call Vermin Man. Uh huh. And uh, he's this guy, he's just literally made up of vermin. Right. And uh, he, he attacks Keanu Reeves in the street. I said, great. So I went and I did my usual monster audition crap, whatever the fuck that was, and they, they hired me. Well, the guy that did the, the, the costume for it, Stan Winston, mm -hmm. so they go in for the fitting and it's, I've worn all kinds of suits, but I've never worn anything like this. It's mm -hmm. like, a, a, like a scuba neoprene shit, mm -hmm. but completely over your face, completely sealed in zipper mm -hmm. in the back with holes. We'll talk about a psychological freak out. It was scary. <laughs> I mean, I was like, you're sealed in there. Right. And they said one of the first things they told me later was they wanted to see if I could handle it. So they go the first thing, they put it on me, they wait for me to like scream. And I'm like, no, I'm, I've done this before. I, I can handle it. Right. So they make the costume and all this shit. We go down to the set. Uh, it was hell. I'm in the fucking thing all night long. But I got through it, right? And um, then they had to do, and I got to wrestle with Keanu Reeves, who's just yeah. couldn't be nicer. What uh -huh. a sweet guy. Yeah, God, he's like so, it. such a great guy, man. So I got to like tack him and stuff. So then they got to do a reshoot. So they call me back and I'm doing Deadwood and I can't make it. Right. I say, I can't make it. Oh shit. Oh, you're, then you're fired. I go, what do you mean I'm fired? They go, we'll get someone else. It's just a suit. So they ah. get someone else in the suit, right? And then they ended up using the other guy's voice. Uh-huh. Uh, but you Plus, are... I found out everything they'd done and they designed this really incredible mask was just basically a template for them to build a CGI on. Right, right, right. Yeah, because you that's see what it, I was wondering. It's all yeah. CGI. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. So you go, there's a case of, man, I worked my ass off. Mm -hmm. I tortured, I was tortured. Right, right, for nothing. I think I just busted my head open. Yeah, uh, <laughs> But I got paid. Right. You know, and I, would, I don't regret doing it. Yeah. Uh, it was worth it because just being on the set. What's your favorite um, genre to play? I know what you're gonna say, but I, I still want to play this. <laughs> genre to play, like like film-wise, like what kind of genres are like, or what kind of characters are you? Favorite? My mother hates this because she's always asking me, "What are you doing?" I say, "I'm playing a, a dope addict." And she goes, "Oh, Larry, when are you gonna play a nice guy?" She goes, "What are you doing?" This time? I'm playing this this killer guy. Goes, "Oh, Larry, when are you gonna play a nice guy?" Right. I really enjoy dark, twisted right. shit. I just do. That's why I like your stuff. Right. I want stuff where people are on the edge of losing their minds, mm -hmm. losing their life. Yeah, because that's I, what's interesting. Like, I'm, I'm, I won't say I'm a fucked up person any more than anyone else, but my dreams are pretty intense. 
but I, that's what I recognize in your work as well. There's a sense of what it is to be a human being mm -hmm. on a planet in the middle of the universe trying to figure out yeah, why the fuck are we What here? the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. And that fascinates me. I yeah. dwell, I mean, I'm not a depressed person, but it's on my mind all the time. So when oh, I get yeah. to play a character who's like basically on the edge, mm -hmm. um, um, it's, I find it very satisfying because yeah. it's a person who's confronting that and dealing with that. Right, right. And I think, you know, I, you know, I, in those moments when I'm going like, why, how did I choose this? How did I end up this? I think mm -hmm. I, I had a, a strong imagination an and I wanted, always wanted to disappear into worlds, become people mm -hmm. that I couldn't be in normal life. I'm a pretty plain guy. I'm pretty basic, bland. Oh, there I'm bleeding again. I'm not yeah. gonna have much time. Uh, there's not, I'm not, a, I'm not a person you meet and necessarily go like, wow, that guy made an impression. I'm pretty low key. So my satisfaction comes in being these extreme characters, right. uh, killers, uh, dope addicts, uh -huh. um, you know, uh, whatever, you know, um, uh, because I disappear into those worlds, man. Right. I have something for you. Oh, you do? I have a present. Don't for give you. me a game because I won't know how to play it. So, <laughs> I created something for everybody uh, that worked on intrusive thoughts. It's uh, kind of like a trophy. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, I see what it is. So, this is yours. Oh, thank you, man. Something that everybody That can means a lot to me. Thank you. There. I so. love this. I really do. I'll treasure and this. Fitting to the show, it's a it's a it's Nintendo a retro, game. right? Right? Yeah, it's a Nintendo game. I think if we actually would put it into one, it would play like a golf game or something. That like is that. so Thank you, man. Thank appreciate you, man. It. I so appreciate yeah, working yeah, yeah. with you. Likewise, man. likewise. Anytime. Listen, uh, it could all be over tomorrow, right? But yeah. we'll have made some good shit. Exactly. I agree. That's all. I that's agree. it. You know what? That's it. I'll say on my tombstone. He made some good shit. <laughs> he made some good shit. <laughs> that was amazing. I mean, we talked I, more I than... I crushed it. You, you did crush it. Crushed like, it. We, we played three games, but it feels like we didn't. Uh, but shit, uh, I don't <laughs> care, man. I, I so appreciate... My pleasure. You coming over here, man. This is amazing. This is great, and, and and I think it's fantastic that you are creating a forum for artists to talk about their art and the process and to honor the process. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, so but man, Larry, thank you so much for coming over. My pleasure, and best of luck with the show, and I think mm -hmm. it's going to be diamond. I can't wait to watch everybody else. Yeah. And learn about them, you know. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you at the next one. See you later. Bye. Bye. Mind Pollution Gaming.